In my jobs teaching at Brown University and working at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C., I dealt with a number of famous leaders. I discovered many of them are quite different from their public reputations. In 2006, I met Barack Obama when he came to Brown University for a lecture that we organized. His flight from Newark was canceled, but rather than scrapping our event, he rented a car and drove himself to Providence. He arrived three hours late, but was completely gracious about the long drive. He was down to earth and not a prima donna at all. In 2012, I had an encounter with billionaire Donald Trump, asked by a DC newspaper to comment on Trump speaking at the 2012 GOP convention. I said Republicans should send him on an all expenses trip around the world because speaking in prime time would be a disaster for the party. After the article appeared, I got a call from Trump's assistant asking for my email address. Shortly thereafter, I got a note in which, over my comment about him, Trump wrote in big, bold letters, Daryl, you are a fool. Best wishes, Donald J. Trump. One of the more unusual interactions I had was with Henry Kissinger, Nixon's Secretary of State. He came to Brookings to give a talk. Years earlier, on the Watergate tapes, President Nixon had discussed a plan to firebomb Brookings. At that time, he thought a copy of the Pentagon Papers was stored in our building. In walking into the building, Kissinger got a big laugh by saying, the fact that this building still is standing represents the greatest failure of the Nixon administration. One of the most difficult politicians I dealt with was liberal Senator Paul Wellstone. He came to Brown for a talk, and we put him up in Gardner House, an old historic building on campus. When I showed him the room, he immediately said, this will not do. I need a real hotel room. We scrambled to find a room for him at the downtown Weston Hotel, and I personally put it on my credit card. That evening, we arranged for a small group of students to take him out to dinner. On the way to the restaurant across town, the student driver got lost, which enraged Wellstone. He immediately demanded that the students take him back to the hotel and that he would eat by himself. The bewildered students took him back to the hotel and everyone was completely embarrassed by the senator's bad behavior. Media people generally are nicer. When I met Mika Brzezinski on Morning Joe, I reminded her the last time she'd interviewed me was on Decision 2000. I asked her not to wait another 20 years before having me back on the show. The strangest encounter took place when Turkish President Erdogan came to Brookings for a talk. Outside, there were a number of protesters complaining about his authoritarian rule. Seeing this, his security forces went outside and started beating up the protesters. We had to call the D.C. police to stop the assaults. One of the most surprising politicians I met was Hillary Clinton. She came to Brown for a talk, and before the event, I met her, and I said there was something she had done that was very upsetting. It used to be that when she had a vacancy as press secretary, she would hire one of my former students. My student Lisa Caputo had been her White House press secretary, and then Karen Dunn served as her Senate spokesperson. Mustering all my outrage, I said that she had hired a Yale graduate, and that was outrageous. It was also fun meeting her husband, President Bill Clinton. He still knew how to give a good speech. The most ominous encounter I had was with a guy I'd never heard of at the time named Michael Cohen. I was sitting in my office and the phone rang. The caller ID indicated it was from the Trump Organization. I entered the call and the guy said he was Trump's lawyer and wanted to discuss a billionaire political power index we had put out. Trump had been rated number 18 on this list and Cohen thought that was unfair. He understood why the Koch brothers had been rated number one because they had spent a lot of money, but he wanted us to move Trump up to number two on the list. 
I asked why, and Cohen said that Trump had done a large number of robocalls and nearly everyone listened to the end of the message before hanging up. Laughing, I said that was not sufficient to move him up. Biden gave one of the better speeches at Brookings. He talked about the working class and the need to improve economic opportunity in the United States. A decade later, when he became president, he acted on that argument and passed several bills designed to improve the situation for many people in America. The funniest politician I encountered was John McCain, the senator from Arizona. He told stories and even laughed at a joke I made about how growing up on a farm had given me my life goal of an inside job and no heavy lifting. His laughter was the ultimate compliment from a famous politician. 